Hello, my friends. Pete Walpar here. I'm the Pete Walpar's Railroad Corner. I'm in the basement today, tinkering around a little bit. Thought I'd take a minute, show you a couple things I I've got here. I've got two of these. Let's see, doors here. These are obsolete retainer valves. Has a lever on to lift up and down for down would be regular high pressure exhaust well I'll just show you the page in the rule book I thought I'd talk a little bit about air brakes. Over the years I serviced air brakes on rail cars on a regular basis. And I decided to save a couple of these because they're old and obsolete type. Old style retainer valve is what it is. And I can explain a little bit about how it works, but basically Every rail car has one, and when they raise the, this lever up, it holds air pressure in the piston. Come in right handy when you're coming down a mountain size, or used quite often up in the mountains to keep the trains from running away. Uh, well, I ain't gonna get into details on it, but they're very rarely used. They have to be functional on rail cars and you have to test them every time you check the brakes. In fact, if somebody ever leaves one up, it can cause the brakes to stick. I've seen that happen many times. But let's take a look at the rule book. Now this is what your modern day retainer valve looks like where it is. These are the old style. Every rail car has one. And it's just labeled here. All the way down is position A is direct exhaust handle pointing downward. In the middle halfway high pressure retained handles at 45 degrees. And at 135 degrees, it's in slow direct exhaust. Now on this particular valve here, every time we check the brakes, on these old style, we had to take a wrench and take these two plugs out of the top. There's an air filter down in there. We had to squirt some oil down in there. And we had to oil this valve here to keep it from sticking. Now these valves haven't been apart in so long that I would have to put them in a vise and beat on them with a hammer to break the threads loose. But some years back they quit servicing air brakes on a regular basis like they used to. And uh probably why this one hadn't been done in so long but sometime during the last few years of my career I replaced these took these off of rail cars and replaced them with a new style that I showed you in the book just a minute ago the new style doesn't have to have oil added to it And you'll still see a few of these around, I would imagine. But you won't see many anymore. In fact, let's look rule 83 and see what it says. 
I believe it's Rule 83 what we want. See what's obsolete and what ain't. Okay, Rule 90. Cards and car parts prohibited in, in, in interchange. Interchange is when you go from one railroad to another one. If you got a these prohibited parts on your car and stays on your system, that's quite legal. You can't go to somebody else's railroad with them. Alright, under air brake equipment. Which Pressure retaining valves less than three standard position type. An even older style than this one was two position. So I guess these would still be quite legal. Let's see a few of them around. You ever look on a rail car and you see these, you'll see one of these retainer valves if you know where to look usually somewhere around the handbrake or in the middle of the car on the side one side or the other maybe I'll get down here and clean that up one of these days or I could clean this one I've got two of them So you need an understanding of how air brakes work on a train to work on them. Many of you already know, but I guess I'll explain it. When a, the engine has air compressors on it that pumps air into the whole train through the air hole systems, the airline that runs from one end of the train to the other. The air pressure captured in a reservoir on the car. The reservoir holds a large volume of air. When you got the reservoir charged up with air, the brakes automatically release. And the way the brakes work on a car, they got this piston and air pressure pushes this piston which operates a lever which pushes the brake shoes up against the wheel. It's quite similar on an 18-wheeler or a truck. You actually have to have air pressure in the line to make the brakes release. If you re reduce the pressure in your reservoir and air supply in the train, the brakes will come on. Piston usually come out with a very little reduction of air pressure. That's how when a train's driving down the road and the engineer puts on his brakes, he draws a little air off the brake valve which causes the brake pressure to reduce thereby making the pistons come on. So if you see a train going down the road and the piston starts coming out the engineer is applying the brakes. I'd do better if I had a real car here to show you but that's the basics of how air brakes work. I just thought I'd try to deal with that a little bit but I should have been a little more prepared to explain it. Maybe next time I get out real fender we'll have a better look at a real car and, and I could explain it a little better. But I appreciate you tuning in to people all part of the real road corner today. Maybe one of these days we'll get into hand signals with a lantern. Thanks for listening my friend.